is that I run a project called Star Wards. It's a project I set up after I was sectioned. We, we collect from wards examples of, of great practice um, th that they're doing. Um, on the whole, they're, they're pretty sort of um, simple and practical ideas which have a, a huge impact. Um, I mean, some of them, as I'll describe, are also amazingly um, imaginative and quite complex to organise, um, but others um, uh, can be highly impactful um, and actually just involved a, just a tiny tweaking in the way things are done or in staff attitudes or, or even the placing of a particular piece of equipment on the ward. The two things that make the biggest difference on inpatient wards, I, I don't know about outside of, of the wards, although I imagine similarly big impacts, but I know for sure the two things that make the biggest impact on inpatient wards are pets and the internet. Um, so you've got something as old as time, although not quite as old as dinosaurs, but you know, just old, um, and then very, very new. Um, although interestingly, in some ways, they're both bore down to, I think, to connections. It's about being being connected with things that are sort of um, important to us. Um, the best story um, I know, I mean, it's true, I don't mean the best story I've just made up, um, but, you know, the, the, the strongest example I've heard of, of the disproportionate power of having animals, particularly small fluffy ones, involved in, um, in, in patients' lives was a, a, a women's secure unit um, in the north that contacted us, well, after, you know, because we were promoting... Um, having pets on wards, and the um, the ward manager told me that this was a so it's a secure unit for for women um, where self harming um, was was a huge problem. Um, it's and um, she said that after they'd introduced a bunny rabbit to the ward, self harming fell by fifty five zero percent. Now, any of you who um, you know have any experience directly or through work or whatever of um, self-harming will know it's an extremely complex and distressing and sort of counterintuitive um, kind of coping mechanism um, and, and very very difficult to um, to make an impact on <laughs> and yet <laughs> the bunny did 19 pounds 99 worth of fluff and dangly ears did the trick absolutely astonishing um, and again raises issues about you know very traditional views of health and safety you know um self-harming it's very very unsafe a bit of fluff up your nose it's actually okay you know a bit of sneezing or you know a bit of sort of white fur on, on your jumper everyone can cope with that but it's quite um but it's new thinking this you know in terms of health and safety and, and risk and so on it's pretty obvious i'd say um and then the internet um People love it, and funnily enough, people who love it outside hospital love it inside hospital. Um, on inpatient wards, that being able to have internet connection is very, very important for all the obvious reasons. Everything from paying bills, you know, when you're stuck in hospital and you know, the bills keep coming on through, to you know, being in touch with friends and family, and um, or finding out information about being sectioned or about your illness or or whatever. It's always fun to Google one psychiatrist and see what comes up. Mm. On a much, much huger, crazier scale, Highcroft Hospital in Birmingham. <laughs> They're very, very amazing. They, they, they love an extravaganza. Um, Patrick Cullen, he is something else. Anyway, lot, um, I think about two years ago, they wanted to take um, patients on a beach holiday. They're in the middle of Birmingham. They wanted them to go to a beach holiday, but it just couldn't be done. Um, it was too difficult. So undaunted, they brought the beach to the hospital. And um, maybe we can insert a clip from the, um, a photo from the website on this. It's got to be seen to be believed. So they imported sand and, I don't know, old-fashioned sweet merchants and, um, I don't know, obviously fish and chips. <laughs> and the patients and the staff spent a, a week in the summer sitting on the beach in the middle of this psychiatric hospital in Birmingham. Just, I don't know, playing frisbee and building sandcastles and, and, and chatting and... Um, I don't know, singing, oh, I do love to be by the side the seaside. It's just, it's great. Um, oh, and they did lots of art activities around it, and I think they brought musicians in. It was really, it, it was big. <laughs> so um, th that is sort of to my top-end ambitionness. But, but, you know, it can be done. And this year, 
in case you're wondering, they're doing Glastonbury. The patient said, oh, we would like to do a Glastonbury, so they're having Glastonbury. And um, I'm taking my wellies. Now, oh, here we are, nice segging here, mud gardening. So multiply brilliant. I, I think it's obvious, you won't need me to sort of describe why it's such a good idea. Um, all, all the benefits of sort of exercise and um, nurturing and creating and things. Um, uh, indoor gardening, just a must really. Sorry, that's a bit sort of prescriptive, but you know, in terms of having plants around and herbs and stuff. Um, an example from the wards, um, Watton Lawn Hospital in um, in Gloucester, they um, had a chili growing competition, and every patient that wanted one was given a tiny little, you know, um, chili in a pot. And I don't know, they had prizes for the I don't know the reddest one or the curliest one or the one that caused most damage to patients' mouths. Ha! Only joking, not really. Uh, but anyway, you know, the, the ones that tasted nice just in a, in a vindaloo. Um, so, so that was great and very, very simple and, and, and just something to talk about. And that's coming back to conversation. One of the most important aspects, I think, of having activities is to provide things to talk about because otherwise it's extremely difficult, genuinely, for anyone to know really quite what to sort of chat about. Um, and the more cognitively impaired you know, the service user group, that the harder it is. Um, so activities are um, really helpful because you can talk about them beforehand and during and afterwards. Um, and then the rest of it is, it, it, it's, it's very, very mainstream. You know, we're not suggesting, um, we haven't discovered that, uh, that what, what really works is for, oh, I have no idea, everyone to, um, develop an, a, a profound interest in, um, I don't know, making their own perfumes or something rather sort of obscure. It, it's all, it's all very, very obvious. So, you know, running, done gardening, you know, music, exercise, it, obvious, but it can be done in particularly enjoyable ways. Um, and, um, and, and the whole going the extra mile thing. So, um, there are wards where they download music for patients onto their iPods um, and that's just great because it means each person has an individualized sort of um, you know set of music to soothe them or you know soothe us reassure us you know inspire us give us hope sort of give us a bit of sort of um, momentum and so on um, it, it's about making you know making use of the technology that, that many of us use anyway many of the staff will use anyway at home it's about remembering to use it um, at work. Pamper parties go down very, very well, or pampering sessions or whatever, really, um, they're great. And when I was last in hospital, you know, we had one of those um, one day um, on the ward and, and it was just really fun and quite a leveller. You know, the, um, the staff nurse suddenly became the beautician and she was in her element. <laughs> She'd brought along this enormous sort of builder's merchants type container with a million different, I don't know, you know, lipsticks and nail varnishes and scars and all this. And it was, and it was, and it was fun and it was sweet and it's, um, and it, it, it's quite sort of caring and attentive, but without being um, too in intrusive. Um, so that, that always goes down well. And apparently it goes down well with the guys, although a bit less on, on the makeup side and a bit more foot spas, apparently. Stuff, stuff very keen on foot spas. Feels nice for the blokes and improves the, let's say, ambient atmosphere in the ward afterwards. So that's, um, that's a, there we are, tip from Star Wars. Um, exercise. We are just down the road from the really brilliant, we, we me, Peter, Carwin, right now, oh buddy, um, from the really excellent Highgate Mental Health Unit, um, that they do some trailblazing stuff and they've just introduced um, an activity for patients whereby it's not just about having a wander around the park, um, although that's good, I mustn't knock that, um, but they've, um, they've got, there's a beautiful local park here and they've created a whole um, activity um, circuit, that's it, an activity circuit with different things to do at different places in the park, um, including just so pragmatically and sensibly a fag break. Now, there's a smoking ban in the hospitals and so on, but actually, and I mean, maybe this is the most useful thing I'll get to say the entire time, that actually if you want to involve the people who are 
hardest to involve in a particular activity, um, you're going to have to make compromises. It, it's not easy by definition, and it, it might feel a bit sort of odd or you know slightly bending the rules or whatever. But um, but but the um, I don't know the more impaired or the more withdrawn or the more complex an individual, the more that. Um, activities and um, approaches and attitudes need to be tailored to actually what works for them rather than you know, what would seem to work for the government or the Care Quality Commission or whatever. It's, uh, to use a cliche, it's about the individual.